let's consider several options which allows us to configure development server. So when we start development server by running npm run dev, it starts with using port 5173. But then if we're gonna go ahead and run another copy of this server, the port will be changed dynamically because the previous port 5173 was already taken by the previous copy of the development server. And of course this port is configurable and just like other configurations, we can override the port in vid configuration file. So let's create an empty vid configuration file and in here we're going to specify an object under the server key where we can configure several aspects of the vid development server. So for example, I want the port to be 3333. And now after running npm run dev, we can notice that the port we just specified was used for development server. But still, if we're going to launch another copy of the server, the port will be changed. And this is a pretty convenient behavior, but in case we'd like this command to throw an error if the specified port was already taken, we can specify another configuration option called restrict port with the value true. And now if we're gonna launch one instance of the development server, and then we'll try to launch another instance, in this case, instead of picking up port which is available, it will throw an error, cause port 3333 is already in use. Another option called headers allows us to specify custom headers for vid responses. As an example, let's specify one header with a name A and the value B. And then in the browser, if we'll inspect the request for fetching the current page, in here under the response headers, we are noticing our custom header A. And this header will be added not only in the response for fetching the current page, but also for fetching other assets such as JavaScript files. Another interesting option is called proxy, and what this will allow us to do is to provide custom URLs which will be accessible from our dev server. For example, I want to use URL slash products to fetch list of dummy products during development, and we can achieve this by specifying custom option proxy. This option holds an object where keys are addresses that would like to be accessible and the values for those keys will be addresses that David is going to redirect those requests. So for this particular example, I'm going to use third-party servers called dummy JSON, which provides us with dummy API. It basically gives us set of dummy endpoints, which we can use during our local development. So in this case, I have used the first endpoint products. And now while accessing this endpoint products from our local dev server, I'm supposed to get list of fetched products received from dummy JSON API. That's exactly what we're seeing. But also besides specifying only addresses for keys inside a proxy object, we can also provide more detailed configuration in the form of object. So for example, I want to have an API route in my development server, which is going to redirect me to that same dummy JSON service. But while redirecting me to this service, I don't want to include API segment in the address. So I'm basically going to modify the final URL which is going to be used to make a request to dummy JSON API by completely removing API segment from the URL, like so. And this configuration is going to allow me to do the following type of requests. For example, if I'm going to refer to slash API slash products, since API segment will be removed, the resulting URL will be as follows. So only products segment will be added to the end of the dummy json.com domain. So now let's try to call this URL in the browser, slash API slash products. This time I'm receiving an error with an error code of 500. This error has something to do with different origins. So without getting too far off the topic, the documentation suggests us to use another option change origin with the value true to avoid errors related to different origins. So now if I'm going to make that same request on API slash products, I'm receiving the list of products. 
but this time we can do even more. For example, let's use different URL. Let's try to fetch a list of posts by using post URL. And to do this, I simply have to change this segment on posts like so. As we can see, it has worked, and we got a list of posts in the response. So for now, we were only specifying all configurations for the server under the server key in the configuration file, but we can also assign separate configurations for the preview server. So let's build this project for production by running npm run build, and then run preview server by executing npm run preview. As we can see, the default port of the preview server is 4173. Let's just try to override some configurations for the preview server. For that, I'm going to copy over this object, paste it down here, and rename option server on preview. And this configuration will only be applicable for the preview server. Let's change something in this configuration. For example, let's use different port, remove this headers object, and add another option called open. Here we can specify which address should be open in the browser by default. After starting preview server, I'm going to specify our custom URL API slash products. And just because we have previously configured proxy, a request was made to the following URL API slash products, and we get the list of products on the page. And this is how we can override configurations for the preview server as well as for the development server. In fact, there are many more configurations for configuring servers, and all of them are described in details in the official VIT documentation.